revealed the Catholic Church has a plan to convert all Protestants. Uh, once again, uh, former Roman Catholic uh, W.F. White speaking here today. Uh, there was a man by the name of John Hughes. He was an archbishop uh, in New York City. Now, he was born in 1797. He died in 1864. But he was um, a powerful archbishop in the Roman Catholic system. And he served in the archdiocese of New York between 1842 and 1864. Very uh, well known. He actually laid the cornerstone for what is now known as St. Patrick's Cathedral on 5th Avenue between 50 and uh, 51st Street there. So uh, very well known man. He became known as Dagger John, uh, uh, both for following a Catholic practice uh, and he was known for his aggressive uh, personality. I want to focus here on a statement that he made here uh, in a, a newspaper. It says, Hughes founded the Ultramontane newspaper, the New York Freeman, to express his ideas. And in 1850, he delivered an address entitled The Decline of Protestantism and Its Causes, in which he announced as the ambition of Catholicism Listen, to convert all pagan nations and all Protestant nations, our mission is to convert the world, including the inhabitants of the United States, the people of the cities, and the people of the country, the legislatures, the Senate, the cabinet, the president, and all. So that's a statement by this uh, very well-known arch. Bishop. Now, that statement, ladies and gentlemen, I've known this all along since I left the Catholic Church. Uh, the, the Church of Rome has an aim. So th there's a, uh, that's their aim in a nutshell, that, that quote I just gave to you folks. And that has not changed. You know, many people have been duped. They've been snookered by uh, the counterfeit unity that has been going on for many, many years, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So I wanted to give you that quote, so just to let you know the true colors of this dark institution known as the Roman Catholic Church. Um, you know, back in 2007, when Pope Benedict uh, XVI, he was the Pope, he made a statement um, where he declared the Catholic Church to be the only true church. And what he was doing, he was just uh, basically uh, making a statement of what Rome has always believed. Okay, I'll, I'll just uh, read a part there right from here. This is uh, CBC News, and this is from July 10, 2007. And it says the Vatican issued a, a document Tuesday restating its belief that the Catholic Church is the only true church of Jesus Christ. So notice it said restating. So they're just making it clear. This is something we believe and we want to make that clear. Let me go to the next part there. It says, uh, the document adds that Protestant denominations called Christian communities born out of the Reformation are not true churches but ecclesial community. So there you have it, right from the horse's mouth. This is the leader of, of the Catholic Church. They're known as the vicars of Christ. They're the representatives of Jesus Christ in this world today. So, you, you know, right from the horse's mouth. I wanted to show you that, ladies and gentlemen, um, as I uh, refute this teaching. You know, I'm going to give you some uh, good stuff here. You know, there was another man who lived during the same, uh, basically, time as that Archbishop Hughes lived, and uh, you've heard his name before. His name is Charles Shinneke. Now, he is a former Roman Catholic priest. He left the, the priesthood. He was a priest for 25 years. He was in Roman Catholic system for 50 years. So, um, you know, there are many attempts to discredit this man. Why? Because he preached the word of God and Satan hates it, folks. You know, whenever people come out of the Church of Rome, there's guaranteed to be persecution, especially if they are a former priest or a former nun. But this man, you know, he had some fame. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you several little uh, clips here from the New York Times uh, just to show you that this guy, uh, he was the real deal. The first clip I'm going to give you, this is from uh, January 17th, 1899, uh, from the New York Times. And this is when he died, okay? So it says, Father Shinneke is dead. 
As an apostle of temperance, his fame reached the Pope's ears, once defended by Abraham Lincoln. Okay, so it's talking about his death. Now, don't miss the fact that uh, he was defended by uh, Honest Abe. Okay, uh, and the reason uh, Lincoln was defending him was because of the persecution from the hierarchy of the Church of Rome. This man was slandered, all f sorts of false charges against him because he was doing things uh, that the Church of Rome did not like. So no question about it. Here it is right in the New York Times. Abraham Lincoln defended this man. Glory to God. And uh it's a wonderful thing you can read in his book, 50 Years in the Church of Rome, uh, how Abraham Lincoln defended him and uh, successfully. Uh, and it's, it's a really interesting thing, ladies and gentlemen, when you see how this guy uh, came out of this. He was so persecuted, uh, this man, in his life simply because he left that dark uh, system. So, you know, by the way, this... Uh, Former Catholic priest uh, Charles Shinneke, he was he was uh, when he was a priest he he came against the Protestants like there was no tomorrow. I mean, by his own admission, he he just absolutely blasted anything of Protestantism himself. But the Lord uh, over the years moved upon his heart. You see, it's the Word of God, ladies and gentlemen, that ministers to people, and that is uh, the case with him. And it was the truth that set him free. You know, that's I, I can so relate to him, ladies and gentlemen, because I am a former Roman Catholic myself, and it was the truth of God's Word. You start opening the Scriptures, I'm telling you, the, the, the Scriptures lit up to me, folks. You know, you start digging into the Word of God. I'm reading the Gospel of John. I'm reading the book of Romans, the book of Galatians, especially books like the book of Hebrews. I mean, it shatters uh, the teachings of Rome. And it's amazing that we're living in a time when, unfortunately, there's so much compromise with that dark system. So let's move along here to another article here. Not really an article. This is from uh, October 30th, 1858. And it's a personal, you know, this this uh, uh, Charles Shinneke took out a personal thing in the New York Times. I love this. And it says, the Re Reverend Mr. Shinneke, the celebrated Canadian priest, has become converted to Protestantism. I love it. On Sunday the 22nd, he declared in a public meeting in the courthouse at Kankakee, Kankakee, Illinois, that he separates himself from the Romish church to follow the religion of the Bible. Raise your hands and praise the Lord. I, I love this, folks. This is the truth that sets the captives free. Oh, yes. And this is what happened to him. And the fact that he took out a personal little thing there in the New York Times, it, it just makes my heart jump for joy. So that was in 1858. Now, it wasn't long before this man faced persecution. So here we are, New York Times article again, July 11th, 1859. It says, Father Shinneke at the Cooper Institute has difficulty or his difficulty with the Catholics of Illinois. So now trouble is coming because they knew about this man. They knew, you know, that court case that he had and uh, all of this stuff. Um, they, they knew what was going on. So he left the Catholic Church, and now he's having meetings, okay? And there was great opposition, as I said, to him. Now, it was a long article. I'm just going to pick out a piece here from that same article where he's having trouble. And it says here, regarding Shinnegan, it says, he gave the scriptures to his congregation, though it was against the laws of the church to do so. The Church of Rome permitted the reading of the scriptures but did not allow him who read to interpret them according to the light which God had given to every man, his conscience and his understanding. Often the interpretation of the Church of Rome was the exact opposite to the obvious meaning of the scriptures. Of what use was it to read a book if you were not allowed to understand it? How would it be if a lady were told by her husband that she might go to see the country in a neighborhood in New York, but not with her own eyes. Supposing her husband said, this clergyman, for instance, will go with you and look for you. And when you come home, he will tell you what you have seen. And right at that point, don't, don't forget he's preaching this to, to the people in that, in that uh, place. So the laughter broke out. She would say she would rather not go. 
So, so what's, what's he trying to say there? The Church of Rome, you know, they teach that you, you, you need the interpretation of the Pope. Okay, they believe the Pope, uh, the Magisterium, and so on and so forth. And and uh, Shinneke, what he also spoke about in, in his book, he spoke about you know when, when he first became a priest, you, you handed the Bible, but you you're not supposed to interpret that Bible outside the interpretation of the early church fathers. Can you believe this stuff, folks? So here he's he's uh, basically uh, making fun of that. So in other words, it's like uh, he gives the example. Uh, as if you got, uh, this woman's going to go on a trip with a husband and says, you know, I'll, I'll send a priest uh, along with you, a clergyman, and he'll tell you what, you what you actually saw. And that's how ridiculous it is. But that is what the Church of Rome does, folks. So here I am myself as a former Roman Catholic. How did I get saved? When, 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 I, when was I born again? Folks, it's when I opened the Word of God for myself. I heard true preaching of the Word of God alongside that, and, and the truth set me free. The, 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 the Scriptures lit up to me. Why? Because it was the power of the Holy Spirit that did that. It was the Spirit of the living God that was meant ministering to my heart, and I was born again. I was saved. I never looked back, folks, all the way back in uh, 1989. Glory to God. That's why I rejoice reading about this man, Charles Shinneke. So moving right along, let's take a look at another clip from the New York Times. This is from January 19, 1882. It says the Reverend uh, Father uh, Charles Shinneke, and forget he's not a father anymore. Call no man father upon the earth. So uh, he's a minister. The, the Reverend Father Charles Shinneke, who is known as the Canadian Luther, was to have told at St. Paul's Church, meaning he was supposed to be there, 22nd Street and 4th Avenue last evening, why he left the Church of Rome. So he was going to give his testimony. But an attack of sickness confined him to his apartments. The Reverend Father P. A. Seguin, formerly a French Catholic priest whom Father Shinneke converted to Protestantism a year and a half ago, spoke in his place. Father Seguin was a priest for 14 years and, and, said, that if, and said that Father Shinneke converted 15 other priests. After 14 years' study, Father Seguin was made a priest in Montreal, Canada. He was born of bigoted and ignorant parents who thought that bishops were ambassadors of Christ. The priests and bishops, he averred, did not believe in the infallibility of the Pope, nor even the faith that they preached. Father Seguin left the Church of Rome because of its lack of Christianity, charity, and love. In November 1879, he wrote to the Pope asking him to investigate charges which he specified against bishops and priests. No attention was paid to the letter Although the Pope declared himself to be the servant of servants, when Father Seguin left the priesthood, he became dead to family and friends. He was cursed by the church and an outcast. He came to New York a year ago, last fall, with but five cents in his pockets. God alone knew his struggles. He was compelled to learn English as he had always preached in French, but he was at last being blessed and prospered. So, here we have uh, Reverend Shinneke, you know, unfortunately he got sick. He was going to give his testimony how he came out of Rome. So it's beautiful that this, this other priest who was converted under the ministry of Shinneke was going to speak instead. And, and, and he made it clear that uh, Shinneke converted 15 other priests besides this man. That's awesome, folks. You're talking, uh, these people were ingrained in, 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 the, in the whole system of Roman Catholicism. This is true revival, folks. This, is a, this was a powerful move of God Almighty upon this Roman Catholic priest and many others. See, the boldness of the preaching of former priest Charles Shinneke is what pulled these people out. It was the spirit of the living God uh, using Mr. Uh, Shinneke, uh, and that's why these people left. Now, look what happened to this... Uh, this man, he, he said he, he came to New York. Look, look, he had a nickel, ladies and gentlemen, a nickel in his pocket. Five cents. Now, c compare that to today where, where many ministers are multimillionaires, folks. I mean, <laughs> a nickel in his pocket. 
You see, and, and, and the multimillionaires, and even if they're not millionaires, folks, those who compromise with Rome, this is a true testimony. This is true revival. This is what should happen today. This is what needs to be preached today. This is true revival. Oh, yes. So in that article, it says when he left the church, it says he was cursed by the church and an outcast. He was an outcast. They cursed him. Okay. Uh, it's incredible what would happen to this man. Absolutely incredible. Uh, very, very uh, interesting stuff. He became dead to family and friends uh, also. So that's what you need to know regarding that. Now, let's go now to 1884. New York Times, November 13th, 1884. So to think about this now, this is like 25 years, uh, uh, 25, 26, whatever, after, after he left the Catholic Church. This is still coming against him, folks. Look at this article. It says, Father Shinnecke mobbed the Roman Catholics of Montreal prevent him from lecturing. Father Shinnecke, the ex-priest, was announced to lecture in Russell Hall in the city last night. The hall was packed with an audience consisting mostly of his opponents, <laughs> while outside was gathered a mob of about 2,000. The proceedings were constantly interrupted, and soon after the lecturer began to speak, the audience refused to let him proceed, and the utmost confusion followed. Men stood on the seats and windowsills, howling derisively whenever the speaker attempted to make himself heard. My, oh, my. So there, there was oh, nothing but uh, trouble. It was basically a riot broke out. Why? Because this man simply wanted to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Church of Rome, their followers, went berserk. This is this is like this is what happened to the uh, apostle Paul and others if you read the book of Acts when the truth goes forth what happened uh, the, the the Jewish Pharisees the unsaved Jewish Pharisees came against Paul and the disciples they persecuted them to no end ladies and gentlemen so this is what happens when the truth goes forth with power when the truth goes forth with unction. So what, what, what I'm saying to you today, ladies and gentlemen, in the modern day in which we're living, this is not happening. The exact opposite is happening. People today are joining hands with Rome. So meanwhile, this guy comes out, <laughs> he leaves the church, priests are being converted to the left and to the right, but today you have that giant sucking sound of Rome pulling people back into the Roman Catholic system. As I began, I, I, I quoted that Archbishop Hughes, that their goal, their aim, was to convert all Protestants, pagan nations. And you're talking, uh, talk about pagan uh, religion, the Roman Catholic Church is a system of idolatry, ladies and gentlemen. So for them to want to convert pagan nations, uh, it certainly doesn't make any sense. So, uh, you know, as I said, this man wrote a book called 50 Years in the Church of Rome. And he tells uh, the story about eventually that church that he had, you know, he, he's all set to leave. And he, he, he was making a statement to them one day that he was not no longer going to be uh, tied in with the Catholic Church. And an incredible event took place. Uh, he had over a thousand people in the congregation and, you know, basically, he, he asked them who you want to serve. And uh, basically, ladies and gentlemen, the whole church to the last man converted and left the Church of Rome. It was a miracle, folks. It was an absolute miracle. I mean, this is, as I said, true revival, a move of almighty God. And now I'm, a, I'm going to uh, give you a clip uh, from a previous video I did uh, called The Monster Church of Rome, which I encourage you to watch, uh, folks. And I'm going to give you a clip from that where, where uh, Mr. Shinnecke, uh explains, I'll give you quotes uh, from uh, how he talked about the revival, what took place. And then I'm also going to uh, quote uh, uh, something that he said regarding uh, a warning. I'm going to give you a quote, a warning uh, from this former Roman Catholic 
uh, priest that he gives to the ministers. In other words, this is a warning for the church of our day too. I mean, if you're, if you're a true Christian, folks, first of all, a true Christian is somebody who's been born again of the Spirit. They've been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. They know that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. They know that Jesus is the only way to heaven. If you don't believe that, you're not a Christian. <laughs> Let, let's settle that deal right now. If you don't believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, you're not a Christian. If you've never been born again of the Spirit, the biblical way, okay, the, the incorruptible seed of the Word of God, born from above, born of the Spirit, if you're not born again that way, not by infant baptism, you're not a Christian, okay? So let's settle that. You, you, you know that the price has been paid, that you're justified by the blood of Jesus Christ, that you're saved from wrath through him. If you don't believe that, you are not a Christian. So uh, let's settle that. Okay, so this clip begins with uh, Mr. Shinicky talking about the revival that took place in that church. Keep in mind, this was a Catholic church, and the whole place, over a thousand people, turned to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and they left the Catholic Church. So here's that clip. Surely the continent of America has never seen a more admirable transformation of a whole people than was then and there accomplished, with no other help than the reading of the gospel that people had suddenly exchanged the chains of the most abject slavery for the royal scepter of liberty which Christ offers to those who believe in him. Wow, folks, that is real, true revival. The exact opposite of what you see taking place in the land today with the inroads of the Church of Rome are nothing less than amazing. Mr. Shinneke in his book, he goes on to say, in less than six months, more than 100 venerable ministers of Christ and prominent Christian laymen of different denominations visited us. Incredible. He goes on to say, I'm happy to say that those eminent Christians, without any exception, after having spent from 1 to 20 days and studying for themselves this new religious movement, declared that it was the most remarkable and solid evangelical reformation among Roman Catholics they had ever seen. The Christians of the cities of Chicago, Baltimore, Washington, Philadelphia, New York, Boston, etc., having expressed a desire to hear from me of the doings of the Lord among us, I addressed them in their principal churches and was, was received with such marks of kindness and interest for which I shall never be able to able sufficiently to thank God. So this this man, I mean, he saw incredible things take place. I mean, the whole church was. Uh, converted. This is an amazing thing uh, which took place. And um, he, he goes on to say in that chapter that Rome is the same today. This is back in uh, when he wrote this book. This was uh, written, I believe, in 1886. Rome is the same today as she was when she burned John Huss, when she caused 70,000 Protestants to be slaughtered in France and 100,000 to be exterminated in Piedmont and Italy. Don't miss this next part here. On the 31st of December, 1869, I forced the Right Reverend Bishop Foley of Chicago to swear before the civil court at Kankakee that the following sentence was an exact translation of the doctrine of the Church of Rome as taught today in all the Roman Catholic seminaries, colleges, and universities through the Summa Theologica of Thomas Aquinas, volume 4, page 90, Though heretics must not be tolerated because they deserve it, we must bear with them till by a second admi admonition they may be brought back to the faith of the church. But those who after a second admonition remain obstinate to their errors must not only be excommunicated, but they must be delivered to the secular power to be exterminated. Let me stop right there. That's insanity, folks. They're talking about executing people. They're talking about murdering people. And this will give you more of a, uh, a, a real keen 
uh, perspective of what went on in the Reformation. This is the Church of Rome. This is how they are. They can, they can kill people if you disagree with them. They look at you as a heretic. Folks, this is, this is incredible stuff. And listen to what he goes on to say. It is on account of this law of the Church of Rome, which is today in full force as it was promulgated for the first time, that not less than 30 public attempts have been made to kill me since my conversion. Okay, so, so this man not only saw tremendous revival, incredible, incredible revival, but they, they went after him numerous times. And, and you, you look at the book and you see what they did to this guy. It's amazing that, that he was able to live and, and, uh, and, and die a, a basically a natural death. I mean, it's beyond belief. So, so the point I make here, ladies and gentlemen, in this video is that the Church of Rome and the doctrines that were preached at the time of this man, Shinneke, in the 1800s, those doctrines remain exactly the same. And what you see taking place in the land today with this counterfeit unity, I mean, it's everywhere. It is absolutely everywhere. People are being seduced. Rome is like a gigantic magnet drawing everybody back to her. And that's the purpose of this video. As I go in, you'll be able to see. And I'll be taking a look, as I said, I'll take a look at that, um, that warning from Mr. Shinneke, which is at the beginning of the book. Here is the warning, excerpts from the warning, written by Mr. Charles Shinneke, okay, to all the faithful ministers of the gospel. Listen carefully. I also dedicate this book, Venerable Ministers of the Gospel. Rome is the great danger ahead for the Church of Christ, and you do not understand it enough. The atmosphere of light, honesty, truth, and holiness in which you are born, in which you have breathed since your infancy, makes it almost impossible for you to realize the dark mysteries of idolatry, immorality, degrading slavery, hatred of the word of God, concealed behind the walls of that modern Babylon. Besides that, the majority of the books of controversy against Rome are of such a dry character that though many begin to read them, very few have the courage to go to the end. The consequence is an ignorance of Romanism which becomes more and more deplorable and fatal every day. It is ignorance which paves the way to the triumph of Rome in the near future if there is not a complete change in your views on that subject. It is that ignorance which paralyzes the arm of the Church of Christ and makes the glorious word Protestant senseless, almost a dead and ridiculous word. For who does really protest against Rome today? Where are those who sound the trumpet of alarm? Modern Protestants have not only forgotten what Rome was, what she is, and what she will forever be, the most irreconcilable and powerful enemy of the gospel of Christ. But they consider her almost a branch of the church whose cornerstone is Christ. Faithful ministers of the gospel, I present you this book that you may know that the monster church of Rome who shed the blood of your forefathers is still at work today at your very door to enchain your people to the feet of her idols. Okay, uh, so you heard the clip. Do you have it, folks? You, you listen to former Roman Catholic priest, uh, Mr. Charles Shinneke. He testified about his conversion, a revival that took place inside that Roman Catholic church. They were all converted, incredible. And then he came forth with a warning, a very serious warning. When you think about it, that was over 120 years ago. And even in his own day, it was bad. People were compromising. Uh, they didn't understand Rome uh, for what it truly was. And if you remember Pope Benedict, 
uh, how he restated the Roman Catholic position that the Roman Catholic Church was the only true church. He made a point of saying churches such as the Reformation churches, they are not true churches. So could it be any clearer, folks? When you hear stuff like that and you see the uh, unity with people uh, falling like dominoes, uh, jumping aboard the ship with Rome, you know we have a problem. It's a big problem. So, you know, they're telling you there's um, no salvation outside the Church of Rome. I'm telling you there's no salvation inside the Church of Rome. I know because I'm a former Roman Catholic, the Lord saved my wretched soul out of that dark and wicked system. It was nothing but the mercy of God. It was the Spirit of truth who opened up my eyes, and now I know the Lord Jesus Christ in truth. Galatians 1, 8, 9 says, But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. The Roman Catholic Church preaches a counterfeit and soul damning gospel without question. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You can't earn your way into heaven, folks. You can do your seven sacraments. You can receive your Holy Eucharist, uh, the transubstantiation, uh, transubstantiation that goes on in the Roman Catholic Church. Do all these things. It won't earn you anything. Oh, no, you won't get in that way, folks. The Bible says um, in Titus 3, 5, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Second Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He wants you to repent of your uh, evil deeds. He wants you to put down a uh, Mary statues, the rosary beads, uh, all of these things, worshiping uh, the saints and praying to saints and praying to Mary, praying to Hail Mary's, uh, lighting your candles, going to worship relics or what have you, folks. Lay it all aside and get saved for real. Here's the real deal. Romans 5, 8 to 10. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. If you're out there today and you don't know the Lord, perhaps you're Roman Catholic, the good news is that Christ paid the price in full. You don't have to go to Mass over and over again and have the sacrifice repeated. Look, the, the, the scripture makes it clear we're justified by his blood. We're already saved from wrath through him, through faith in him. And it says, if we were enemies, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So no matter who you are, Andy the alcoholic, come on in. Put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Danny, the drug addict, this is for you too. Pamela, the prostitute, this is for you too. Ronnie, the Roman Catholic, come on in. Manny, the Mormon, good news for you. Turn to Christ. Judy, the Jehovah's Witness, the good news is Christ paid the price. And also, he's God. So put your faith in him before it's too late, folks. I'm going to leave it right there. You have a great and blessed day.